Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is Chris Sarda at Cast and Comics on Instagram and Twitter, and this is show number four. I'm surprised that I've mostly this goal is just to get these five done. Uh, I'm surprised that I'm I'm still here. Normally, I decide to go do something else, but I have to say I am having fun doing it. Uh, it's mostly about doing it at night before I go to bed or just want to sit and veg out and read. Wednesday's especially hard for that because I have a bunch of new comics that are sitting there staring at me. And normally this is when I would read them when the kids are asleep and everything. But uh, I'll figure that timing out. Luckily, I was able to read most of them today. So a lot of times this Wednesday, if I do this on Wednesday, it'll be more of a haul show. But I did read a good chunk of them today. So I'll be able to talk a little bit about them. So uh, that is going to be the, the basis of this show. Um, it's going to be a little bit more what uh, I guess I typically do on this channel, which is either a comic haul or a, or a lightning review or a or talk about what if or whatever, right? So it's going to be uh, more of that basis, uh, probably mostly what I'm going for, but I don't read seven comic books a day anymore. Um, maybe when the baby's a little bit older. That will start happening. So uh, let's get to it. Four days in a row. We'll make it five, and then I'll just never do this again. So how about that? That's what that's what'll that's what'll come of this. Um, so I guess I'll start off with since since there's a bunch of comics to talk about, and and I'll I'll make that in one chunk. I did find I did just watch uh, What If, and I watched it on time, and so I'm somewhat current. Although you know all of those What If. Whenever there's the hot YouTube show, not show on YouTube, but that YouTube talks about, so any Star Wars show, any Marvel show, um, you know, everyone gets so excited to get like their video on like three in the morning or something like that. So I am somewhat timely, but there's like probably 350 what if videos out there already. And often I'm not going to watch them in time, just like Star Wars Visions. You know, I'm watching that slow. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a different show. But uh, but uh, what if I I watched? I was able to. It's contingent on my wife feeling like watching it, um, and she gets just as excited for these. But if she didn't feel like what that show we're watching together, and if she didn't feel like watching it, then we would wait on it. Which is which is what happened a couple of weeks ago. We had to watch two of them in a row, or something. Um, the Marvel shows are a, a little bit of a little bit of friction between me and my wife because I do want to watch them somewhat timely. Um, where my wife is, is more like, let's watch them together whenever that may or may not be. It could be four weeks, you know, so, um, and the movies are even more difficult with kids now because, I mean, I'm lucky, right? My wife really buys in to like, the Marvel movies and Star Wars. She loves it. Um, it was our, you know, it, it, it still is our thing to do something that we've just had fun. I mean, we got married the year Iron Man came out, right? So basically our entire marriage has been these movies that I got her into. Um, so when the kids came along and, and you know, I don't always want to wait, I sometimes I'll go on Thursday alone, which I guess makes me sound like a real dick, but uh, I do make sure that we watch it together later, except for, Sha Sha except for Shang-Chi. I made her go to that alone because I had already watched it twice because I fell asleep twice. So... Uh, this issue, this episode of What If is uh, was uh, was big. I mean, that's the biggest. The one thing you could say about it is how big it was. Um, uh, so it connects somewhat indirectly to the Party Thor episode of last week, and I knew that wasn't going to fit, or else it was going to be really weird because you had like a comedy episode, Party Thor, with all these weird cameos, and then. Vision Ultron shows up and there was something something in the back of my head was hoping that it wasn't going to be another uh, another joke episode with something, you know, with as cool as Ultron looked with the Infinity Stones and whatnot. Uh, and, and we were lucky that it wasn't. But when I watched it, I mean, it, the show seems that episode and the one that's going to continue from it seems so huge. It just seems massive and uh, like movie massive. And it makes me think, like, what what could we possibly do in the films that you know I'm going to shell out if it's Shang Chi forty bucks for because I paid for my brother's ticket the first time around, and uh, and then I had to go again. What are we gonna like? 
what can we pay for that's as big as what this what if was where this vision Ultron with the infinity stones figures out how to get into the multiverse. I mean, no one else figured that. You got a whole Loki series where he just sort of poked and prodded at it. And, uh, and this one just is gigantic. Uh, so that's the, that's the initial thing I thought was this episode is the, is the most wide ranging biggest episode with that can have the most effect on the multiverse than Dr. Strange ever could have, right? So maybe they'll surprise me. So th maybe the multiverse of madness will come out and uh, I'll get surprised and I'll be like, oh, they did it, they did it. Or maybe this next episode of What If is gonna unwind it all and it never happened. But um, but yeah, it was enjoyable, but you're just thinking about just how massive it is. Um, you know, and I think one of the other things that one of the other things that got me too is the the character that is able to uh, transcend into the multiverse, uh, almost be that original original Galactus. You know, make it so that Uatu has to break his 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 oath, which I mean, it's happened so many times now, but originally happened with Galactus, right? Um, how many bigger things have happened on Earth since Fantastic Four, forty nine, fifty, and whatever? Uh, that Uatu has not decided to break his oath for, but um, uh, but yeah, so this is that sort of that Galactus level event. Um, but I found it weird that it was Ultron getting the getting the Infinity Stones. Um, you'd think that if if a power if in, in the infinite multiverse, uh, Ultron getting the Infinity Stones could transcend the you know where the Watcher was watching everything that there'd be a lot of other characters if they got a hold of the infinity stones that probably could do the same thing galactus being one you know so is there a multiverse of multiverses where galactus is doing i don't know um and uh something else i enjoyed about this what started prior but what is uh now happening is um move that chair out of the way how about that is that we're leaving the one-shot nature of what if we had a good little chunk where it was just fun little uh little one-shot stories where we got to hear or learn something uh, about certain characters and how it would all change like what, what what if it's supposed to be uh but over the course of a long long season and i don't even know how many episodes this is that you know that would just be cute you know and uh, and now feeling like these stories that we've seen that that we're watching them for a reason that they might be all weaved together a little bit uh, makes me more excited about this and and it's hard to say because I do like the idea of just one shots and let's move on and and being creative but at the same time uh, it grabs you a little bit more when you have something serial that matches and there's Easter eggs going back and forth and it's the point of comics right. So very exciting what if, a huge, huge episode, like gigantic in the MCU huge kind of thing. And uh, and uh, and yeah, there's gonna be a season two, that's for sure. So, uh, and I'm gonna move on to some comics. Now, uh, I do have a small stack of physical comics I bought. Those are, those are right there. Uh, but one comic I meant to talk about yesterday that uh, I didn't say anything about because I forgot, and also because it's right as of right now, it's digital only. Is uh, Snow Angels here? Now, this is for, I don't even know why, to be honest, that this has been one of my one of my favorite comics that I'm reading. Maybe it stays with me a little bit more because it's really the only digital comic that I'm I'm reading as it comes out. Where like on Marvel um, Unlimited and and DCU DC Universe Infinite DCUI. I'm just reading the older comics that come through, and most of those are ones that I just didn't want to spend more money on. But uh, this is one that I, I get at um, on Comixology. It's a Comixology original. So originally it was only gonna be digital, these things. Um, over the last year, I think Dark Horse got um, some kind of contract where they'll start printing them. So when this comes out in print, I, I, I strongly recommend it. Uh, it is Jeff Lemire and Jock, so that is, you know, that's a selling point on its own, right? Um, but what's interesting is that it it doesn't feel like a Jeff Lemire book, not, at least not completely. And and you, you know, Jock's work on it is is really good, but it's really simple. Uh, it's something it almost feels for for what Jock's level is. Almost it feels like a sketch, you know, 
but just because the nature of the book is is to have it in this vast snowy expanse um even when it's really simple it feels it just feels good to me and not a ton is going on in this picture right i mean someone's falling i'm trying to, this is the newest issue so i probably should have started with issue 1 so i didn't give these spoilers but it's not going to be um bad it's not going to be crazy spoilers or anything like that um mostly talking about the art you know and uh and yeah it's it's it, as far as skill wise it doesn't feel like um jock's best work by a long shot but it just fits the narrative everything that's happening in it uh and of course the the storytelling in the panels uh very cinematic here uh, the uh the way the characters are drawn are again simple but uh really fun and then what really what really brings us in it just feels like a very unique Jeff Lemire story or very unique story in general i generally you know i i've started to put a lot of stuff together obviously because we're four issues into season 2 and i can't remember how long season 1 was either four or six issues and uh and even now though even though they've revealed some stuff i i, I can tell you i'm not really sure what's going to happen and that's always something that like that intrigues me you know look at this just open space and this is a little bit more compact the, the vast majority of this series has been very uh very empty and expansive and just felt like um this unending emptiness and it's interesting because obviously they're on a planet where this is happening um but the feeling that it gives me is is just an infinite amount of space and who knows what's out there and, um and i can contrast that against the um the movie or the show the expanse ironically called the expanse but those books at least um i've only watched the first season because i only gotten to, through two or three books but those books at least feel really tight actually because the at least at the beginning it really only takes place within the solar system so you're in the solar system and it, obviously it's going to take up way more space than whatever planet this is in 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 lemire and jock story snow angels but uh in the expanse to me it felt very compact it felt like it's just a bunch of countries sitting around you know so uh, i've really 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 enjoyed snow angels um mostly from mostly from a the um uh perspective of its of its simplicity uh in both writing and the drawing but then how much there's actually going on out there in that snow that looks completely empty uh, I'm going to move on my friends and uh and I'm going to show what I picked up and then I'll also talk about for the stuff I did read I'll talk about those. Um let's start with a few things I haven't gotten to yet. Uh I grabbed um Star Wars Vader's Castle Star Wars Adventures. So this is the IDW books. Uh they recently lost the the license to it. Uh so I think we're just going to get the rest of the year maybe a little bit into the new year. But uh this I didn't grab number 1 so I'm going to have to go find number 1 but when I flip through it the the art looked really cool and that looks like Space Usagi. There literally is a Space Usagi Jimbo for those that didn't know. But it looks like Space Usagi Jimbo. So I guess that's a little if I had opened up to that page I might have been like oh that's Star Wars adventure cartoony. But you know I enjoyed the Star Wars High Republic adventures, Star Wars Adventures High Republic and I hadn't even really read any um of these adventures books. They just they looked too kiddy to me and I know they were mostly out of continuity. So, um, see that looks cool to me, I guess. And um and now I'm a little bit more open to it. I know Vader, the Ghost of Vader's Castle is a um I think a short story somewhere. So, I guess I'll be reading it in comic form. Uh and then we have a Batman Reptilian number 4 by the great Garth Ennis, one of my favorites ever, and Liam Sharp who uh, I was a bit critical of his art in issue 1. Uh, liked it in issue two. I have not read issue three, so that's why this book is unread. Um, it looks like we're back to uh, being very dark, but you know what? There's going to be, I might as well not even show this on here because you can't see it on the camera. But um, there looks like some pretty cool things here. Um, so uh, I enjoyed number two a lot. So I'm sure I'm going to enjoy number three. And I love this version of Batman. Obviously, this is one of those things where you don't want all your Batman to have this attitude, but um, but it's it's cool because it's Garth Ennis and it's his viewpoint. Oh, and this one I just wanted—I might even read this uh, after I'm done recording here. 
Uh, Echo Lands 2 has come out. I didn't realize part two came out because the uh, director's cut for part one came out and I pre-ordered that, that's coming in the mail. But number two was out and I got very excited. I got the B cover, um, but number one was really good and I hope we get to the next level in, in this issue. And uh, you know, you're, the reason you bought this ticket was for the art uh, and the story was pretty good in number one and I'm sure it can go much further in number two, but this is, I don't know, is that BB-8 right there? I don't know, that'd be great if it was BB-8. Um, there's a chance that this is that, this that kind of book. But And then the presentation, of course, is in landscape mode. So I guess I could put it like this, I don't know. Uh, is in landscape mode, so that adds a little bit of, of color to the whole thing. And what do we got? We got some letters back there. Last time we had a whole October, equivalent. last time we had a, Oh, oh, there's a raw cut edition for number two. Last time we had a, a, a bunch of pages of what he was listening to while he was drawing Echo Lands. Um, so that's it of physicals that I have not read. Um, here's a small stack of what I did read. I'm going to shoot up some of the books that I'm that are coming in on pre-order. So they, I got the email saying that they came in from Gmart is where I, I do some pre-order shopping. But obviously, they haven't gotten to me yet. That'd be a while. So um, first up are a couple of a uh, couple of trade paperbacks. So the autumnal or the autumnal. I looked this up on how to properly pronounce that, and I'm 94% sure it was autumnal. But um, uh, I read number one and two of this and really liked it. But that's where I started I, around that time. So that would have been eight months ago or something like that. I got a lot more. Is when I tried to be a lot more strict on on tr on switching to trade. Uh, and so autumnal was the autumnal was one of them that uh, I stopped buying, even though I liked it. And you know, for most of Volt's horror, I'm in on it. I'm not a horror guy, but the way Volt does it makes me uh, uh, makes me more interested. Um, and then the other uh, trade paperback I got was Berserker. So I have to admit, uh, I like I like the art in number one. That's the only one I've read is number one, and I I like the art. Uh, I was feeling what most people felt that it was just a bunch of hoopla, uh, as far as like it just being violent and sort of pointless. Um, Lee from Wack Comics has been pretty famous for just destroying lots of berserkers, and in one I think of their music video, he has a stack of berserkers, and he often complains about or mentions how he doesn't. In Australia, you don't really buy that many singles. Um, but somehow he bought a bunch of berserkers and, uh, and uh, you know, he destroys them a lot in very different and creative ways. Um, so despite not being really into it, uh, one, it was really cheap. I think it was like $6.99 or $7.50 or something like that with the discount. Uh, but also it reads fast enough and it's, it's, it's relevant, right? I do this YouTube thing, so... Uh, I do want to read the full arc and see what's up in it and maybe even judge it for what it is, which is right. It's supposed to be a TV show and Hey, I don't love it that comics set themselves up like that. But if this one's so explicitly supposed to be like that, then why not? I'll be like, well, may, how good of a show will this make? Um, and then uh, in the single issues, I had a handful here. Uh, this is one I forgot I ordered. This one's called Verge, and this is from Red 5 Comics, so uh, a very small publisher. Uh, and the, the blurb for this is a mysterious time travel event known as The Verge had brought thousands of people from across all of history to New York City, Vikings and Samurai and Ron Romans and Mayans and cavemen and thousands of others live in a vast and turbulent melting pot. It's like the opposite of Snow Angels. Connie Liu, an in, in NYPD detective, investigates the murder of three samurai, a case which threatens to turn the divisions of the city into all-out war. So it's, it's I mean, so uh, Silvio DB is the artist here. It's written by uh, Bryce McKellen. Um, but when you choose to write a story with Vikings and samurai and Romans, you know, the art's going to be very important in it. It doesn't look too bad on the cover there, but if you're gonna if you're gonna choose to do something like that, you know, a, a lot of my grade on this is gonna be on how how cool it looks. Um, so that's the Verge. That's from Red Five Comics, 
and, and that'll come in in a couple of weeks. I didn't grab this off the shelf, and uh, this is also the uh, the the card variant. So this is uh, the the new Darkhold comic, and I don't I don't know if it's just called Darkhold or if it's called Darkhold Doctor Doom. I'm I'm honestly into this. Uh, I like the magic Marvel stuff. I like that world, the Ghost Riders and the Brother Doo Doo Doos, <laughs> Brother Doo Doo. The Brother Voodoo's, even though I don't know that much about him. Uh, Doctor Strange when he mixes in. Midnight Suns, all of the Dark Horse and Blade and all of that. So I'm happy the Dark Hold is back. Uh, and I'm interested in that. So, you know, it was one of those, though, where it, I'm trying to read as much as Marvel on Marvel Unlimited as possible. But, um, but you know, I'll grab stuff occasionally, I guess. Maybe I'll read number one and then wait after that. So, um, and also I really like the card variant. And I think um, we'll talk about this in X Men, but there's you know the 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 Scarlet Witch is in this, and so there's some like uh, timeline screw ups going on here, which is is pretty funny. And most of those are because of COVID. We're still feeling the ripple effects of the the COVID effect. Um, Spawn three twenty two. I read these immediately. Uh, I I really like them, but. But then again, it's the kind of book that wouldn't necessarily make my top tens if I were ranking them. Uh, it's just, to me, it's just fun comics. Um, and uh, it's the kind of comic you could really jump in at, the, at any point. The, the first issue you jump in, in, you may not feel that way. But then just things connect and they connect and they connect. It just It's never ending. It just keeps moving on. I mean, it's not even really told in arcs, to be honest. Like, it just continues on. So, and it's fun. It's fun to see Spawn have a little bit of a renaissance um, with a bunch of uh, other issues coming out. And I always grab those um, side Spawn issues from the 90s, like uh, um, like Violator, which Alan Moore wrote, actually. And Sam and Twitch had a, had a cool series. I only have like three issues of that, but I enjoyed them. Um, you know, Medieval Spawn, et cetera, et cetera. So here's a comic that I enjoy, but... I don't really know what's happening. I feel like Undiscovered Country, I should have all these things to say about it. But uh, it's it's pretty basic. And uh, I, I don't love the Cam and Coley art. Or what's his name? Cam and Coley, yeah. I don't love Cam and Coley's art in general. Um, but he, he seems to get a lot of work. So it means he must be on time. It means he must be a hard worker. Uh, but um, it takes a, a little bit away uh, for me. Uh, but then at the same time, I read a lot of comics that he draws. So that means that he draws well enough. He draws fast enough. And I enjoy the comics for the most part, even though I'm complaining about the arts. That means he probably tells the story well. So um, i got to leave Cam and Coley alone a little bit. And then this I pre-ordered and it came in. And um, this is one of those things that you know about if if more if you're on Twitter. But um, this is by Frank Gogol. And he got semi-called out for some... Uh, racist slash sexist stuff. I mean, I already ordered this book, so it's coming in. I'm going to read it anyway. This is Unborn. Uh, what's he's gone? He's gone quiet on Twitter. He used to have a YouTube show. He's gone quiet on that too. Uh, he didn't. He, you know, he seemed like he was a little bit outright about hiding his politics, which is funny, being outright about hiding something. Uh, but, um, but hey, I don't know the story there, and I got that book, and I'll read it. But uh, it's uh, it doesn't it doesn't make him look in bad light. Or very good light, and I think he was at the table at Bro City Comic Con. So I don't know. He's been quiet on the internet, but he hasn't disappeared, and 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 Scout still seems to be supporting him. So um, who knows what'll come of that? I will read that book. I would probably won't stick with it because I got a lot of other books to read, and I don't need to deal with that. Um, but that's Unborn Number One. So that's like some meshing of Alien and Power Rangers or something. And the people that have read it said it's good. So. Um, I guess I'll give that a read, and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, what's funny though is that, you know, if something gets hot on the internet, then, and these are mostly people I agree with, uh, you know, politically and socially. But if something has to get hot on the internet for them to really come down on, you know, the punishment or the canceling or whatever, dynamite is an example there. But I mean, if Scout had him at the table at Rose City, that's a little weird, right? But if that came out. I don't think much would happen with it. Um, and I don't, I don't know that I would care or that matters to me or that people that, you know, publish with scout, they, you know what I mean? Like it, you could just connect everything to some kind of 
some level of being canceled, you know, and it gets very um, frustrating, but it is good to point that stuff out so that especially men know it's not safe to uh, act in a certain way anymore. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move on to reviews, reviews of the ones I did read. Die number 20. This was a most anticipated book. Uh, I feel like the the uh, the big emotional stuff happened in issue 19. This uh, uh, this book had more of a, the explanation of what die was and what it meant. You see all that big, you see all that big lettering right there. That's, uh, you know, that's die somewhat explaining, not really. Um, you know, when, when you read Kieran Gillen, you're not going to get everything put nicely in a box. That's not to say that plot lines aren't, um, uh, you know, aren't buttoned up and ended. He didn't leave anything open or anything like that. But, uh, but yeah, you get, uh, you get good stuff and, um, a lot of stuff open for interpretation. So die number 20, I may do a more in-depth preview of that in a little bit. Crossover number eight. Oh man, crossover left the, the, um, you know, the stock cover. So now it's going to feel really weird, especially if I don't bag and board these, cause I don't think they're worth that much. Um, this is a little bit like undiscovered country. I mean, I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed, but I'm interested enough that I'm sticking with it. So, um, this issue was good. Uh, a lot of jokes on Zdarsky, which I like. That was the, definitely the best episode, uh, or the best issue was the one shot that Zdarsky did. Um, you know, other than that, it's, you, you, eventually the, uh, you know, all the comic book characters are in this world kind of thing, you know, eventually that dies down. And then the story that you have built into this, you know, it's just uh, moving a little bit slow, like the, the character story that's built into it. It's not as a, uh, you know, super, uh, Thor number 17. I've been on and on, on and off on this book. Um, another Kate's book. Right. And, um, and this one I really liked, though. It is, uh, you know, it's dealing with, I think one of the aspects I like about it is that it's dealing with Thor's family. And I think we're going to, you know, that's going to be left to the wayside a little bit because we're going to start talking about um, about the hammer a little bit more. But, um, but, you know, I didn't read a lot of Thor when Angela was around, when Angela came into the Marvel Universe. I have a few issues that I've never read, like in, you know, in boxes over there. Um, but it was really funny. So Thor and Hera and Angela and Odin all going back and forth on each other um, was uh, was entertaining to me. You know, there's, of course, there's action. So pretty basic all around. But this issue worked for me. Um, Thor has been, I would call Thor very good. But, you know, there's there's been points where I've not been as into it. And then I, I hear people are more into those points where I liked, like, the first six. And then people are like, eh. So, um I don't think it's grabbed the the people yet. Um, I think it's just pretty good. And it's really hard to follow up what Jason Aaron did, even though no one cared very much about what Jason Aaron did the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, uh, Star Wars, we are still in War of the Bounty Hunters. And this is an example of a book that, or an event that really works, feels like it's good pacing. Um, and the tie-ins uh, actually tie in in a cool way. But, uh, you know, just because the tie-ins tie into what happened in the, in the main event book um, so well that you just, you feel a little bit frozen in time. So this would read a lot better for you guys that are reading it on, on Marvel U. I would read great there because you could churn through a bunch of them. And, um, you know, there's a point where Darth Vader is bidding on, on Han Solo with a bunch of under, uh, you know, um, the underworld. And I saw that scene like in three, you know, in, from a different perspective, which was cool, but from three different uh, viewpoints, you know, so it feels a little slow. I've been reading this, I think since May or something is when the alpha alpha came out and then it really started in July or something like that. I don't know. Um, let's do a little, uh, I should just save this. I think this week in X-Men will come out. I just, since it's, you know, it's still pretty quick, but I don't want to, I want to be able to talk about this a lot more or maybe do its own video. Um, we did read all three X-Men books today, uh, and they were all wonderful books, actually, um, especially Inferno. If you hate X-Men, this is the book for you. Uh, destroy it all, right? And then Sword was wonderful, and Wolverine was great. I love Solemn, and some cool stuff happens there, but I think I'll do just a separate This Week in X-Men video. Hey, guys.
I'm going to cut it off here. And oh, I got to cut it off uh, 30 minutes. God damn it. I almost got under 30 minutes. My name is Chris Arda at Casting Comics on Instagram and Twitter. See you guys later.